pain is bad. So let's avoid pain and anything that causes pain because that's comfortable. This is what our culture tells us to do. This is what we grow up learning how to do. And we do it fairly well, especially men. I guess I can't speak for everyone, especially me. Um, I try my best to avoid pain and things that cause pain. But what if that paradigm, what if that way of thinking that pain is bad is wrong? What if pain is good or can be used for good? What if the pain I experience, the sufferings and the trials of life, what if they're meant to lead me and to guide me into something greater? God tells us in the book of James, he tells us to consider all trials pure joy. How do we do that? How is that even possible? Well, he goes on to say that we can consider them joy because we know that they're producing in us an endurance and that endurance is growing so that we can become more mature individuals. I can say with certainty that if I did not have my mental illness, if I did not have and go through the trials that I go through, that I would not be the man that I am today. I know that the Lord has used this trial in my life to help me to grow in maturity in my character, maturity in patience, um, in endurance for sure, and in many of these ways. And I know that he can and will do the same for you. In order to learn from life's challenges, we have to stop avoiding them or numbing them or ignoring them. We have to embrace them head on, go th right through the trial with the Lord, knowing that he is not going to leave us. He's not going to forsake us. He is going to be there with us through it. And if we allow the trials in our life to drive us to our knees, not literally, but figuratively, in prayer and in leaning on the Lord for our strength, we will find that he is always waiting and he is always ready to help us. So... In order to fully grasp why trials are good, we need to understand why they happen. And part of that we've discussed already, uh, but the other part that we sometimes get confused on is that God is not punishing us. I think sometimes we get confused and we think that when we're going through a challenging season of life that we're going through these challenges because God is punishing us. We've done something wrong, we've offended him, we've made him pissed off, and now he's going to make our life challenging. I just want to let you know that God is not insecure and he doesn't operate that way. If you have pay placed your faith and trust in Jesus Christ, if you have allowed him to be the leader of your heart and your life, then that punishment is taken on the cross once and for all. Like he died one time for sins past, present, and future, all paid for. When the Bible talks about sin, it talks about it in terms of debt, like a debt being owed and a debt being paid. And for believers in Christ, the debt has been paid by Christ on the cross. So when we go through hard times, it's not God punishing us. That's been taken care of. 
Now, that's not to say that God doesn't discipline us and teach us. The author of Hebrews in chapter 12, he talks about how God is a loving father, and a loving father disciplines his children. A loving father disciplines his children. So what's the difference? Discipline, punishment, what's the difference? They're not the same thing. Punishment has to do with condemnation, and it has to do with paying that debt that we talked about. Discipline has to do with correcting a course and gently leading us back on the right path. So God will discipline us by using trials in our lives, by using pain, suffering, etc. But he's not punishing us. He's not condemning us. It's not, uh, you did something bad, so I'm going to cause something bad to happen to you. God is not insecure. Someone's bound to ask, as everyone who's human has asked, including myself, what about the question, why do bad things happen to good people? I'm not a philosopher. <laughs> um, I, I like to study the Bible because it gives me answers to life and it gives me hope and a reason to live. And it tells me that there are no good people. Um, just people that hide their rebellion against God, really good. The Bible says that everyone has a little bit of rebellion in them. Some people more than others, but everybody has sin in them. There's nobody who's got it all together. And that means that if we're talking about this, this analogy of a debt being paid, we all deserve to have to pay for that rebelliousness in our heart, that selfishness, that, that part of us that is bent in. We, we deserve to have to pay for that. So anything good that happens to us here on earth is only a gift of God because we deserve so much worse. We deserve to have a, a challenge and a trial and suffering every day. Um, but God is so gracious to allow us to have freedom most days. Or at least I hope it's most days for you. Another reason that we encounter trials is the curse when Adam and Eve, the first man and woman, were upon the earth, the Lord gave them a choice. He said, don't eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. He gave them a choice, and they chose to rebel. And in effect, due to their choice, a curse came upon mankind. And this, this curse we call sin. And it affects every aspect of our lives. It has made every part of creation broken. It's why there is death. It's why there is pain and suffering. It's why things decay. It's, it's all the result of this curse. And so God, being just awesome and wise, the way he is. Uh, he, he had to put this curse on mankind for our disobedience. He wanted us to have the choice to have free will because he wanted our hearts. He could have just created beings that automatically bowed down to him, but he wanted our hearts, not just our actions. So he gave us the choice Adam rebelled, the curse is upon man, now there's suffering and trials, now there's pain. So God's going to use this pain that we brought upon ourselves, because if we were in Adam's shoes, we would have done the same exact thing. That's what the Bible says. Adam acted as our representative. So God's going to use this now 
to help us to grow, to lead us and guide us closer to Him. And if when we're going through hard times, we choose to press into God by, by drawing near to Him, rather than pulling away from God and ignoring Him, that's where we grow. That's where we find that He's available to us and His love is just waiting for us to, to take a part of and, and to embrace. And that's what He wants, honestly. He wants our hearts and He wants us to come to Him for all of our needs. I know that this short video is not going to answer all of our questions about pain in this world. There are still questions that I have that I don't think I will ever get an answer to, at least not until I get to heaven. And that's the beauty of faith and trust in God. We don't have to know everything. We just have to trust that God has our, our good in mind and his glory. That's what God is all about. So that's what I have today. If you would like to chat, um, feel free to PM me on Facebook or leave a comment below, whether it's on Facebook or YouTube. I'll try to check it on a regular basis. Um, yeah. I hope you guys have a great day and I hope that this was helpful.